Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Just Kicking It. I go by Polo Show and I'm with... Soy. And we are here to talk some hip hop. Um, so our first topic in the global world of hip hop, Kendrick responds to rumors. Um, and from what I understand, I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've heard from Kendrick like this year. I think we saw him, um, he's been really quiet this whole time, but I think we saw him um, when the protests were going on, like kind of showed up like in a mask, yeah. hoodie up, like he was just, he looked like he wasn't trying to be seen, you know, but he was, he just had to be out there, right? Um, and then, yeah, did you see this video of him responding? No, I didn't, no. It's like, uh, it's, it looks like it's a Blue's Clue, like teddy bear in front of a camera, so it's not even him. The fuck? But I mean, his voice is talking, but we don't see him. And he's just kind of like, you know, using the teddy bear to be like, yo, why are they speaking on my name, blah, blah, blah. Um, using a funny voice or whatever, but just kind of like, you know, just showing that, you know, he's still here, like, yo, I think just addressing, I didn't, I didn't watch the full thing, but just addressing that, you know, he's still with the label because the rumors were that, oh, Kendrick has left or he's leaving TDA to go do his own thing, no way. you know? Um, and I don't know, that took a, a life of its own because like even, uh, I think Punch had to address it, like a uh, TDE guy, one yeah. of the TDE uh, CEOs. Um, so yeah. I don't think there would yeah. ever be a time where Kendrick's not on TDE. Like they're literally like one and the same. That's his label, man. Like he started that shit with uh, Top Dog, like shit. Why would he ever leave? The label itself is so fire. Like every artist is amazing. Yeah, I honestly, I I saw this, but I didn't even, I didn't think much of it. I wasn't like, you know. Apparently I say Rashad, this is like a total different. Like Isaiah Rashad was supposed to drop pretty soon, but I've heard that for the past four years. So, so what is what's going on in there then? What's going on internally? Like, right? Like there must yeah. be something else. I don't know. It's not all it's not all cookies and candy, is what no. I'm saying. Like, you know, like it sounds like, you know, I see a voice at one point that, you know, it seems like, you know, she, she wants to drop music, but she can't. Something really? like that. That was a while ago. Um, you know, I'm sure she's back on. One thing I've noticed from the TD camp is when they do drop a project, like one of the solo projects, like J Rock's Redemption. Shout out to J Rock. Your album was fucking awesome. I love that really? album. Um, definitely one of my favorite albums of 2019 or 2018, I think. And that was a good year. So that says a lot about that album. Um, like you could kind of hear like everyone gets involved. I feel like, I mean, I don't know the internals, but it seems like whenever there's a certain artist dropping a project that the whole label's behind it. Like, mm. um, when SZA dropped, you could tell Kendrick was behind some of the creation of the songs. Like you could tell he was very into it and, and he was very like, he was a part of the process at least. Mm. And maybe some of the other artists are, they help each other out like that. Cause we do that, right? Like when we're working on someone else's project, we're all there, we're all giving advice, we're all giving feedback. And I could see that being a portion. So it might be tough to, to drop music because you know as an artist you want to just put music out and you want to make the best music but if like your focus is on somebody else from the label and you agree to those terms of like hey when someone else is dropping we, we focus on that one Fair i can enough. see that eventually <laughs> taking a snowball effect of like okay like maybe SZA wants to to branch out a bit but I can't see Kendrick being the one advocating like, yo, I just want to put out an album. Like, Yeah, no, I don't think that's what's going on. So yeah, it's just, it's like the fans. It's just, you know, obviously like we've not heard from Kendrick all year. Right. And it's like fans are obviously starting rumors and shit and rumors take off a life of their own. So I'm glad he addressed it. I'm glad he like, you know, he, he didn't just let that continue. And then, you know, we have to wait for the project to be like, oh, he's still on, he's still on TDE. He dropped it on TDE, you know? But, um, so yeah, yeah, I'm glad he addressed it. Um, another thing I wanted to say is, um, we talked about 21 Savage's, uh, Mr. Right Now featuring Drake last yeah. week. 
and where Drake dropped the bar saying like, yo, I, I used to date SZA back in 08. <clears throat> SZA actually tweeted this week, you know, saying that, yo, he obviously just did that to make it rhyme. We actually dated in 09. Um, I, I wasn't intentionally trying to rhyme there either, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, basically, just, I, I think you did the math, basically. So if it was 08, it would have been illegal. I think that's that's why, right? Uh, that's why Here's she had to like, Michael come, Jackson. <laughs> that's why she had to like come out and be like, "Yo, I was actually like 18 in 29 in 2009." So yeah, just clearing that up. But yeah, that, that didn't even cross my mind. Like you, you're the one that immediately you heard the bar. You're like, "Yo, let me do the math here." Yeah, because I know <laughs> she's like she's not that old. And she's still I know, I know. fine. So I was like. Man, how long have these people been in this industry? Like, I didn't know SZA was in the fucking music industry since 08. She might not have been, man. Oh, Maybe she didn't want people... I, I feel like, yo, man... Well, I don't want to say anything like that, but I, I feel like maybe she didn't want to make it seem like, you know, Drake had a hand in her come up, you know? Oh, like maybe, shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's why she wanted to keep it a secret. Because I'm like, yo, how? why would you not want people to know you did a Drake? You know, like, there's only W's to come from that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... It's um, my baby. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I I look at stuff like that as well. But uh SZA is very talented, you know, so I'm not knocking her ability. Um and Drizzy's talented as well, you know. Yeah. So that's just dope that you know, <clears throat> they cross paths, you know. I was talking to this uh with Paxton the other day and I was just uh I just reminded me of the biggie lyric, uh dreams dreams of fucking an R and B bitch, you know. Yeah. Um Drizzy's living that life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy for Drizzy. Um, so yeah, jealous. on to our next topic here. Benny the Butcher drops uh, Timeless featuring Lil Wayne and Big Sean. So this is the first single off his uh, new full-length album that's going to be releasing probably later this month. Um, entirely produced by Hit Boy. Um, yeah, I'm... How do you feel about this? We just you just like checked it out, <laughs> man. The beat itself reminded me of some Jay shit, which is always a good thing. Um, I know Big or Benny's a huge Jay fan. I think most are, most rappers are. But uh, I gotta say, bro, we talked about it a bit before. Fucking Wayne is just a different animal, man. I don't know what the hell he just spit. Like what what time zone he was in and what caliber of mc he was but there was no one that could have got on that song and done a better verse <laughs> i don't know one mc that could have went on that song and been like like i'm don't get me wrong like benny did his thing sean was good but wayne got on there and he just like destroyed that shit that's what that's one of the better verses i've heard from him i think so as well man. and that's saying because all his verses are dope like Bro. I think for me, it's like, I just feel like, um, I told you, like, so I saw a comment that said, yo, this is like literally the most like, like legible I've heard like Wayne in years, like just like the most articulate I've heard him, you know, like just like the best form. And that's just the best, that's the way, that's the best way I would describe it. It's not that he's not been rapping good. I just felt like, you know, just a different, like, yo, I gotta be sharper on this. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't know. I say it's because of Benny, man, like, um, I feel like Benny makes us all want to be sharp. Yeah. Um, Dude. But yeah. Yeah. I really, I really like the record. Um, I didn't like it when I first heard it. I kind of, mm-hmm. I don't know. Not that I didn't like it when I first heard it. I was like, oh, this is a new Benny single. But after first listen, I was like, oh, this is not what I was expecting. But um, obviously, I've had, a, I've had some time to sit with it, and it's, it's bars, right? And it's a, yeah. it's, just, it's a vibe. Um, every, all of them are like they're bringing a different perspective to the song. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> It's but just, yeah, yeah. It's I really like the uh, Hip Boy is just on some shit right now. I don't know what's going on with him. He just wants to run rap, I guess. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'll probably be listening. I'll listen to that Wayne verse for sure. I might just skip. <laughs> like that shit was so sick. Oh. Ain't dropped some jewels too, man. He did. I'm actually rocking my my fucking um. My plugs, I met a hoodie today. This smell the fuck. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I'm really pumped for this project that's about to drop, bro. This is, I think it's the first time we've had like Benny in like a, 
one of our topics, you know, like Griselda's been doing their thing, but now they're making that, they're getting that look, right? Like, yeah. So <laughs> this yeah, is dope, this man. Is... I, I love to see Griselda come up because I feel like we're very, like Lifted Ones is very similar to Griselda, you know, mm-hmm. we're like, we're trying to come up um, on that independent grind too. So just seeing them do it in real time is just, just gives me hope, right? Absolutely. Um, man. So yeah, on to our next topic, which is uh, Big Sean's record deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so Big Sean did uh, have a couple of bars on on um, this Benny record, basically just saying that, um, you know, I signed a slave deal. Now I'm up owning my masters, you know. Um, and we'd heard him say like his first record deal, he voiced it this week. So we'd heard rumors about this, like Charlamagne had said like, yo, yeah. um, Kanye has to do right by Sean because he has a terrible deal. Um, and then I saw Sean said on Fat Joe's podcast recently, like, you know, his first record deal was uh, 15,000, which is pretty low for the industry. But again, I can understand because if we're comparing him to like a, his contemporaries at the time, which were like Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick, mm-hmm. who all had tapes, you know, who all had, you know what I mean? Like they all had like a previous, they all had like some kind of online presence, you know, to their music, you know, um, whereas like Sean didn't have, it's not like he could show you a fire music video on YouTube that he had or anything. He just, all he had was that moment with Kanye where he just showed him like, yo, I can actually rap. Yeah. Um, so I'm just saying like, he has a shitty fucking record deal, but it's not like boo hoo, you have a shitty deal. It's like you, you know, you walked in with no leverage, you know? So yeah. here, you, here you are like, you know, making millions in the business, but that's, that's how you came in, you know? And that's, that's the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he definitely had a shitty deal coming in and they just talked about, how he didn't um how he didn't own his masters or blah 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 so i think we saw the tweet just the other week we talked about it as well kanye said he's going to give all the good music artists 50 50 percent of their masters back does he only have 50 percent? i think that's how it works because um good music is an imprint label on def jam so it's a joint venture you know def jam is out here just like yeah no, we're not giving up the masters yeah so i think um when you sign to good music, Kanye owns 50% of a masters as owner of good music. And then Def Jam owns another 50%. And now in Kanye's whole plight, you know, to be on some, yo, everyone needs to have their masters back. I'm Moses, you know, um, he has to like, so he, he, he owning people's masters, he had to give that back. Right. And so I guess we're just talking about it to see like, do you think uh, Def Jam is going to give Sean the other 50%? This is assuming that, uh, Kanye gave him 50%, you know, but he said like, yo, I'm up owning my masters in this bar. So I think he's on the verge of getting it back. Um, I think, I think there's a, probably opportunity. Uh, he definitely has leverage now. He sold, I think so, man, yeah. because it's like, what, when did he, if, if he came on in like 2010, like we're mm-hmm. finally famous around that time and it's 2020 now, dude just dropped like five albums. He's gone platinum multiple times, you know, He's featured on Demi every Justin Bieber album. I feel like he's, a, you know, you know what I mean. Like that's I see. Like Sean is a superstar. You know what I mean. Like yo, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. He's not. He shouldn't still be fucking dealing with the first contract. That's, that's ten years of the same contract. Um, and so that's how I see it as well. Like I feel like yeah, he should have the leverage at this point, right? Like he's grinded. Um, so they should hear him out, and I hope he gets what he deserves. Yeah, I just think um, it's a bigger. Yeah, I don't know. It's. It's a complex, more complicated than, and it's only coming up because Kanye brought it up. That's the funny thing. I mean, I'm seeing like other people like talk about it, like, but yeah, you're right. Like it's only really coming up because, but it's, it's just, it's funny how like what everyone is really low key in a bad deal. You saw Hit Boy uh, made that thing. He said like, yo, Kanye said he didn't want to talk to me for whatever reason, but like, you know, I do fuck what he's saying now though. Like, I have been in like a shitty deal since I was 19. Like, and I like, literally I'm just like, I'm for the rest of my life. I want to make money in music. I just got to go extra hard just to make, you know, a little bit of money because I signed a shitty contract when I was 19. And, you know, you're just realizing like this ripple effect, like, yo, everyone is in kind of like a shitty contract type situation, you know, and it takes someone on Kanye's level, someone who knows, like he was in his tweets, he was talking to the, talking about the executives at Universal at, at Sony, 
you know, by first name. He was like, yo, you know, Mark or Peter or whatever. Like fucking people we don't fucking know, you know? I'm like, yo, I, <laughs> you know, but he's that high up. The yo, he walks in Def Jam. He's like, yo, I want to speak with this guy, you know? No one, no none of these others, you know, Big Sean can't do that. So it has to be a, a Kanye West to be the one to, you know, that's why everyone supported him when he's like, all right, you're really about this? I didn't see anyone that was, you know, saying anything bad about Kanye that week, you know, but it's kind of like, it seems like it was just that week's rant, you know, where, where's he, where has he been with that since then? You know what I mean? Like, I, I remember I saw on the Joe Budden podcast, they were like, yo, I like this rant. You know, they were all like, oh, oh no, man. Like, yo, that's what it's come to now. Like, we, we just accept the rants we like. <laughs> you have to. It's crazy, bro. No, I, I think we should just, I love Big Sean. And I think he has so many records sold, bro. I think people don't understand me like, like how much money you'd make owning I Don't Fuck With You, just that song alone. Like mm. He has like multiple, multiple, multiple platinum records. Uh, he's a He is a superstar, man. Um, and so for him to, it, it's just like, a, it should, it's, shit like this is good because it's going to be like a ripple effect. And slowly, 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 we can eliminate the, the label itself and then there is no, there's no disconnect anymore. Because, you know, I never want to, Wale is a good example of an artist, or Lupe is a good example of an artist that gets cut in these contracts and they are forced to make certain types of music because they're essentially owned by these record labels. And mm. it's just like, it, it just defeats the purpose of actually creating music and I could see that weighing on an artist and them, like if that was me, and I'm like, I'm trying to put out an album where I have these fucking weird ass skits. It's like, the shit is like a movie, but they're telling me, no, we need some trap shit. And they're like, we're not going to put it out unless you put out a trap album. Like that's, it defeats the point of even being an artist, right? So um, yeah, hopefully this leads somewhere. Cause like Russ is definitely an advocate for this. And he's like a prime example of, true of like owning your shit and nipsey and like there's a few guys that have definitely the conversation was starting before with those guys but kanye is that guy that's on that level that's gonna make it a broader conversation where it's like even the fucking nel chopper that dude poor guy signed a shitty contract and he deserves to make whatever he wants like, if you want to fucking put out a little pop album of just, like, you singing with a guitar, you should be able to do that. You shouldn't have any restrictions, you know? I think that's my biggest gripe about these. Not even the money. It's, like, the, the control that these labels have over you because they have your masters or they have, you know, I don't know. It doesn't seem like Big Sean is the, the cat that's not making exactly what he wants, but, like... You could think of artists like Wale is a prime example of someone who who was putting out shit that you could tell was not what he wanted to put out. Mm. You know, but that's a different. I guess that's a. It's all one and the same to me. Um, but yeah, so I'm in, I'm in full support of this. I do like this Kanye rant. I'll, yeah, like it, it's this is one of the rants I fuck with. You're right. Uh, maybe next week I'll be like, yo, Kanye, you're canceled. I don't cancel anyone. But like, I don't know. We also said like when he did this rant, like, yo, is Kanye really out here? Like, yo, I need to do this because this is what's right to do for all of us. Or is he really out here? Like, I need to do this because this is what's right to do for all of us. But if I get my master's back, y'all are on your own. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I just need my beautiful dark twist of fantasy. And then fuck you. Yeah. That's what it kind of looked like. Cause you know, he kind of was like, yo, I'm, I'm Moses. I'm going to do this for all yeah. of us. And then, People are like, yo, but you you li- you own a label. What about yeah. people on your label? They don't have their masters, and you're like, all oh, um, right, you should shit. Like, <laughs> you know, so yo, that's crazy. We'll see how this plays out. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so on to our next topic, uh, our final topic for global here. Uh, Tory Lanez has been charged in connection with the shooting involving Megan The Stallion. I so, the um, I guess it's um, global news. It's going to um, 
Uh, the L.A. County DA's office hit him with one count of assault with a semi-automatic firearm and one count of carrying a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle. The DA also alleges Tory inflicted great bodily injury. Tory also like called out the DA on his project, BTW. So I feel like she's out to get him. Um, if convicted, he faces up to 22 years and eight months in prison. It's a long time. It's a long time, dog. But um, I honestly think that um, I think Tory thought like, oh, they're not gonna be able to build a case. I'm gonna come. In, I'm coming out of this scot free, mm-hmm. and that's why he greenlighted and put out that album. Um, because man, just him getting convicted is like this. Is this this is a terrible album promo, man? Like literally, like yo, he dropped the album. Two weeks later, he drops like highest in the room. He drops the album the day Brianna Taylor's like conviction comes out, and it's not one people want. Two weeks later, he drops highest in the room, like celebrating, like, yo, I didn't do shit. Two weeks later, he gets charged. What? Yeah. Like, what is, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I'm like, it's not looking good, bro. Like, <laughs> uh, at this point, I'm like, yeah. where is your manager at? Where's your team at? Where are the people you're talking to? You know, like, is it just, it seems like you're just fucking like, you know, you're not, Man. You're not talking to anyone, you're just doing shit. That's why it's a complicated situation because it's like, damn, you got to be pretty confident in yourself to believe you didn't do it and put out a full album knowing that there's probably going to be repercussions if you did do it. It's like a... It's a really... Fuck, it's so complex, man, but I really want to get to the bottom of it. But, I mean, the problem is, man, he's already guilty in a lot of people's eyes. Even on just slightly... I'll say like mine, he is, but it's like, I feel like that has to do with social media. So I got rid of social media and I'm able to be a little bit more clear minded. Mm. And I just don't, I just don't know. And I don't want to fucking, that's a long time, man. And he's a really talented guy, 22, almost 23 years in prison for if if he didn't do it. Like that's a, that's, that's fucked up. But if he did, that's still a long time. That is that's, a long time. That's a that's a really shitty situation to be in, man. I'd fight if I didn't do it. Like if you don't, Tori, if you didn't do it, man, you have to fight. You can't you play. Fight. You cannot. You cannot say that you're guilty because then you're you're fucked. You're done. Even yeah. if you get out of prison, you're never gonna. No one's ever gonna. I still think there's going to be people that like, I still don't believe him, but it's like, I, I think, um, like, I think like you're, you're right. We're going to find out for sure. Because like now, now that he's been charged, he, he's going to be, he's going to uh, plea or he's going to fight it. And if he, if, if they take it to court, he's going to have to tell his story, you know, to defend himself. Um, and so I'm curious, like, again, we still don't know the full story, but Megan has told us as much of the story as she can, like in detail, you know, all Tori has told us is that, yo, he didn't do it. Shruddy lying. Her team lying. I love you her. Know? <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> you know, so I just feel like, I, I, I just want to know what this case is. Is it yeah. like, yo, yo, she didn't see me shoot her or was it an accident or, you know, I, you know, I think even on the record, he said, yo, it didn't happen how she's saying it happened. You know? Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can't see this going. Man, that's such a long time. I don't want him to go to prison for that long, bro. I <laughs> Man, that's, that's a lifetime, bro. That's literally a fucking lifetime right there. That's like, that's damn near 25 years. You know? That's a so, long time, man. That's, that is like, that's, that's literally, he's going to be fucking over 50 years old when he comes out, if he gets convicted. And if he didn't do it, that's fucking bullshit, man. That's unfair. And it's like how it's so crazy he has the whole world against him he's in a very he's in a very like i just feel like man like i i just think like when i when i'm watching this whole thing i'm thinking about like yo the whole world is against him but i'm like what would you do if you were toward lanes you know and I, I feel like the right thing to do is say something you know like because he's still tweet. he's not like yo i can't tweet like he's still like yo i i would just i don't know man i feel like the right thing to have done is just send out a tweet in like the night after, even if you weren't waiting, the night after she accused you, once she got on live and said, yo, that nigga Tori yeah. shot me, that's a good time to, you know, all right. Yeah. That's a good time to come out and be like, yo, I don't know what she's saying. She, I, I didn't shoot her, you know. 
So I, I just, that's, that's where my head is at. But obviously around that time, he was like, all right, we need to put out the finishing touches on this album. You know, it's getting out of hand. <laughs> like, like that's, that's how that went down in his head. Look what God made. Man. That is a dope record, man. I'm just, um, I'm distressed. I feel, I feel like last week we were joking. We were very jokative about it, but this is a very serious, like, that's so long, man. I can't even. It is. It is. It is very serious, man. I I agree with you, man. Um, fuck, I I don't know. Yeah, you're right. It is a long time. I just feel like. I just feel like, man. He he has the power to take this all out of his hands if he just tells us the truth, because Megan has told us her truth. That's that's all that's missing from this right now is we still don't know his story. All we know is that. One of the baddest chicks in the game right now is saying you shot her, bro. She is bad. You've not given us a reason to believe <laughs> that you didn't shoot her. You know, all you're saying is, yo, why are you not rocking with me? You know, um, he said on the, he said on the album, you know, I've gone back to the album a couple of times and I've really like, tried to digest what he's saying. He's like, yo, um, if I had done the stuff that you guys are saying I did, I would be fucking mad. I would be calling me names too, you know, lying and trying, you know, I'd be trying to discredit me and all this shit. I just thought you guys would hear my story first. And I'm like, yo, but if you, if you understand that, yo, you, if you did do this, people yeah. would be acting this way. And that is the situation. It looks like you did do it and you've not responded. Then why are you upset at people for acting this way? You know what I mean? Like you understand that people are going to act this way towards someone that looks like they did this. I mean, I've probably been in the same position where I'm just like, yo, like what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't no, do it. It's climbing but- because... Cause a lot of just a lot of his stuff is like, yo, I held your baby in my hands. You should at least give me a call before you like take me off the album. Don't just go to Twitter and all that stuff. But it's kind of like, it's a weird I don't know, man. If you in, if man. you shoot if you shoot someone tomorrow, bro, I'm gonna expect you to give me a call. You know, why would I? You know, why am I gonna incriminate you by calling me? Like, you know, by calling you. You know what I mean? Like, why would I? Like, if I if I know, like, I've heard from sources now, like, oh, sources. You know, you shot someone. Why am I going to give you a call and then just be a part of that situation? If I ever you know? call you and say that, that <laughs> that's insane. I just call you. I'm like, yo. That's just how I see it. I was like, why would Kalani call you up? Like, yo, did you shoot this girl? I need to know because I, I, I'm either going to leave you on the album or not. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> like, I used to wake the fuck up. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just... <laughs> Face the music, buddy. <laughs> Yo, <'cause> he, <laughs> and stop we said, making it. <laughs> you said this last. You said this last week, man. Like the more I listen to the music, the more I'm like, "Yo, this just seems like 17 tracks of excuses." This just seems like, <laughs> you know, I'm not hearing indefinitely that you brought God you know, there, was, into it. <laughs> there, was, there was no gun in your hand. I'm not hearing the what you're being charged for is the possession of a gun and the assault of someone. And you're saying yeah. you didn't shoot her. And you you didn't have a gun, you know, like you're you're basically disputing even the charges, you know. So I'm just like this whole record is and the whole time you're dancing around it. I don't know, you know what I mean? Like I don't know. Yeah, it's a I shame. Think this is what this is what has come out of it. I saw like because he's made this a part of music history, you know. It's not just <clears throat> it's not just the event anymore. It's now he re- he decided to release this project, you know. And now yeah. this is forever going to be the conversation around what even if. It is a really whether even if it comes out that yo, he didn't shoot her, Megan and her team are lying. You know, Megan is actually the one that comes out of this discredited, and like Tori is like the true person. It still is not a good look. You know what I mean? It's still. It's yeah. this dropping this album was just still not the right way to have handled it. You know what I mean? And that's just, yeah. that's just it. Just goes down in history. Yo, you did. You know what I mean? Like you did this with, you know. You did this before the you know the world actually knew what went down, and I don't know. It's just kind of looking like it's not going to go his way, you know. And that it's kind of looking like this album is backfiring as it stands, you know. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We've definitely had some laughs about this, but you're right. This is a very serious situation. Someone did get shot. Um, yeah, I, I I just hope we get the story, man. Like I just because yeah. that's that's all that's missing. Like uh, we talked about it before we even started this. Like you know. Um, Every single time, like this, something new has come up. We cover it in in the podcast, but it's like we still don't have the full story, and it's like it's almost like it's like clickbait now, you know? Like we, you know, it's yeah. P- 
people we don't know what's going on and every single every every time and that's that's and that's really the most distasteful look of it right like Tori is still dropping music videos right he dropped a yeah. music video for a record just the other day after the charge um and it's just like you know what i mean it's like you're not in, so you don't give a fuck you know like what is yeah say something else bro say what we you know what i mean like you yeah. just want us to rock you just want us to rock with you but you don't you know what i mean like people are rocking with Me- megan because she's said her truth she's given us a pretty detailed uh yeah. description of what went down that night you know all you said is yo shawty line like literally like that's it that's kind of like yeah. i don't know man when i think about that i'm like you you playing bro you playing yeah i just hope whatever happens i'm praying for tori I really, I, I really, you know, he talked about on his album about coming from a really, really hard background. And I know I've listened to his music for a while. I know how hard his life has been. I know how much he had to go through just to get into the position he's in right now. And so if he did, if this was manifested and he did do this himself, I'm just, I'm just sorry that it had to come to that. And I'm sorry that I'm not sorry, but I'm like, I feel, I feel bad because it's like, he really did come from like a really dark place. You know, he lost his mom very early on as well. And like, I've heard his story, you know, and it's it's a very inspiring story. And I just hope, I hope that we're all wrong and he somehow is found not you know, I just, I just don't want to, I don't want the dude to go to jail for 22 years, man. I just don't. 22 years is a long time, but, um, don't. yeah. I remember, like, um, I think it was Maul on the Joe Budden podcast that had brought it up, just saying that, um, you know, just that neighborhood where the shooting went down, just the, the residents, like, that's one of the most prominent neighborhoods in L.A., right? That's fucking where Kylie Jenner lives. Kylie Jenner's a billionaire, you know, so just... Yeah. The, just the kind of neighbors that live in that area, just just the the society. You can't get shot on that block, and that murder doesn't get solved. You know what I mean? Like those people living there don't want to hear shit like that. You know what I mean? Like that's, you know, if you're living in a think about the security in an estate like that, they want to hear that yo, if, a, if someone shot someone, that guy's gonna get prosecuted. So you you know what I mean? It's part of the security of living on that block. Yeah. You know? Um. So this is going to get dealt with. You know, that's why it's the DA dealing with this. Yeah. Um. So we'll see, we'll see how this plays out. Um, I, I just, you're right, man, because again, this is an artist that we, we both know and love, right? Uh, he's Canadian. We we're talking, we talk about him all the time in, in the national section. So um, we hate to see him disappear for 22 years, you know? Um, so I hope. I hope the truth hope, comes out. Yeah, I hope the truth comes out. Yeah. But yeah, that concludes our global for today. Global is done. That is the end of the global. And we now begin on our national news. I don't know what just happened to me. National news, here at Just Kicking It, we grasp at straws. And (laughs) we we didn't have a lot of straws today, guys. There was not a ton. We had like one straw and it's not even Canadian, but we're going to fucking make it work. So uh, Logic, some of you may know, the biracial boy, um, you know, Mr. Oreo, he is, he's, uh, he's living that rap life, even though he's retired, retired with quotations. I'm doing quotations if you can't see the video, because Lord knows he's going to drop another album probably in a year. Uh, but cause that's what rappers fucking do. Uh, and I'll be the, I'll be the first one to hear it. But, uh, so he had this news come out of, he has too much money. That's really what it is. Uh, he bought a card, assuming it's from Canada. He bought a card. Uh, if, if anyone's familiar with this show, it's called Pokemon. I think maybe everyone's heard of it in the world. And there's a card, uh, everyone's favorite Pokemon Charizard. And the shit was so expensive, man. He literally, he just drops, he dropped $227,000 on a fucking Pokemon card. 
Now, his idea and his his mindset, he's always this positive, positive peace, love, positivity, bullshit. It's real. I don't know why he says bullshit. Like, but he he dropped it because. Um, he couldn't do it when he was younger. He used to he used to use his food stamps, which is the way he eats his food, uh, coming up from Section 80, and he used to get Pokemon cards. So he's been a nerd. You know, that's kind of what he's saying. He's like, I've been about this Pokemon life, and now I'm just able to buy whatever I want. So he dropped the 200000 on this Charizard, and it just got me thinking. I'm like, damn... Like, I'm sure me and Shosha are going to be in very, very good privileged positions one day where we'll be able to be uh, uh, dropping some stacks on shit that we really don't need. And so my question to you, Show, is let's keep it nerdy because we can say that, you know, I'm going to get all the fucking Nikes that you've ever seen. I'm going to get some Pumas in this bitch. Uh, You know, I'm going to get that Versace. Yo, I'm just going to buy a hoe. But, like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but like, what's something nerdy hose are us <laughs> <laughs> is this is a website i just bought this hoe um i'm gonna buy some tims though i'll tell you that i fucking love tims i love puma actually i really like puma as like a yeah. like their shoes i really enjoy them. they're really comfy as well but um yeah i got these fire pumas but that's a different um so what is a purchase, a nerdy purchase that only you would buy? Let's say the shit costs 200000 and you got the money, bro. You're, you're good. You're set. You look at your closet and you're like, yo, I got all the clothes I need. I got too many shoes. I got a studio. I got everything I could want. I make music with my best friends, but now I'm bored. And I got all this money. I don't know what to do, but I want to purchase something that's just freaking ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know. It'd probably be like some comic book memorabilia, man. <laughs> probably purchase like uh, the Adam West Batmobile. That'd be some fly shit. To oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> Why do you say that's so casual? You would have buy like the whole... Because I have fucking $200,000 to spend, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you should do that, bro. I'm in full support. <laughs> You just that's described Ill. this. You described the setting like, "Yo, the closet is full. We, we got everything we we could possibly need, and I still have two hundred thousand to blow." Like, fuck yeah, I'm calling that dude up. Like, you sell that car? Excuse me, Mister West. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Batmobile, please. Um, dude, that's yeah. Sick. I probably will get the also the tumbler from the Dark Knight. That'd be fire. Damn. I would want I would want the car and the motorcycle because they're two separate vehicles. But yeah, that's mainly it, dude. I'd be buying Batman and shit. <laughs> like, I would, uh, I'd become Batman. That's, like, that's that's really it, you know. Like that's that's the summary of this. Then know? I'm gonna like, buy the suit. If, if, and I'm, if I'm set, I have everything, and I still have millions to spend. And that's pretty much it, dude. I would, I'd be living in a in a Wayne Mansion type situation, and dude. I'd be. I'd be building the cave. <laughs> you got to I was literally about to say like you got to make your studio the bat cave. Like just have the logo of like the bat cave and just have it like really deep underground. Have a fucking waterfall for some reason. <laughs> That'd be sick, dude. That's a that's a great that's a great purchase. I think so, man. I think that'd be cuz there's actually a dude um I was researching him one time um and he's just like known, I don't know if he's still alive actually, but he's known as the guy who owns like the greatest like memorabilia of like Batman collection stuff. I feel like I've seen um, that video. <laughs> yeah, I think he's the dude that's actually currently in possession of the Adam West Batmobile for now. So he's like he basically has like a room and like his uh, his whole basement is devoted to it. So the car is even in his basement, and there's like vintage comic books on the wall, like all these fucking yeah. like you know action figures still in the in the packets. Like Damn so, he's just he's got everything there. But um, that yeah. tumbler would be fire, man. Especially the Tumbler bike. would be fire. I don't know if that would be legal to drive. You could go. To that's Ozar actually a us. car that can fucking drive and can you know do like up to hundred miles per hour. Then I will drive that car places, bro. Like <laughs> I would be pulling up in the tumbler. This motherfucker bro. going to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Show Show Danya is is just running over. <laughs> <to everybody. laughs> 
<laughs> you just call me like, yo, yeah. you just want to go get some milk? <laughs> just to get a fucking carton of milk, anything, you're just like, yo, I guess I got to take the fucking tumbler. I just grab my Batmobile real quick. Um, that's hilarious, bro. I was going to say, you could get the Catwoman suit. And then you could purchase a, a girl at Hose R Us. <laughs> You'd be like, this is your attire. Uh, no. I wonder if that's the thing when you get to that level. I got to stop. I have to stop, Show Show. Uh, I think mine would be some real nerdy shit, man. I'd want to get... I'd want to get... Um, I would either get... I'd probably get Legolas, or not Legolas, as uh, Aragon sword that he used to uh, the one that they like recreated in the Return of the King, where they mm. built it again. I just think that sword. I can't remember what it's called. Fuck, it's the one that killed Sauron the first time, and it was like torn, and then they rebuilt it for the Return of the King. <clears throat> I know the sword you're talking about, but no, man, like, I don't remember the name. Um, I'd want that, and I'd also want a ring, like one of the rings that they had on set, of, like the One Ring. Um, with the fucking thing inscribed, inscribed inside. Yeah. What's inscribed inside? It's uh, it's dark. What does it say? The one ring to rule them all, I think. Oh um, yeah. And then, yeah, bro, that'd be that'd be my most. I'd, I'd drop two hundred k on that shit, bro. That's oh, that ring, real. Just no to have. No it. one would even know it's that ring, bro, because the fucking That's inscription it. is inside. <laughs> 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 you could just buy it cheap. I will explain <laughs> every time. They won't even ask me. I'll be like, "You see that ring? Which one? The regular ass ring?" I'm like, "Fuck you, man. That should." <laughs> um, no, that would probably be maybe some like game shit. Like, I love like Jack and Daxter. I'd probably get something to do with them. Like, I definitely wouldn't want like um, maybe some PS One, maybe some Xbox shit, but. Um, yeah, bro. There's a, there's a bunch of shit that I would, uh, unnecessarily have. There's actually like, bro, that would, I had a conversation with my boss and he told me, he's like, I think you're going to be the provider of your family. And that's definitely my goal, man. I don't know if that's your goal, but I want to be the guy that my family goes to whenever they need something. And I just want to be able to support my family because there's just, there's just such hardship, you know? And I just want to make sure not even my, just my kids, like my nephew, I want to make sure he never has to live a, a life that's just like nothing but awesome. And I want to make sure my whole family is in that position, you know? Um, it's going to be a tough road, but I think I think we're on it, man. And I think we'll have this conversation again when you're in the battle. I'll be, I'll be like, remember when we talked about that? But No, no. Fuck yeah. I think so. But yeah, so that was just a fun topic for National. Uh, that's it for National, though. Let us know. Um, I don't know if we're going to post this on YouTube, but like, let us know. Or not YouTube, on not Instagram. Like, let us know what you would buy. If you had $227,000 to spend on whatever, what the hell would it be? I'm saying the what? One Ring to rule them all. <laughs> and Shosha was saying... Uh, the Batmobile, both of them. The Batmobile, yeah. <laughs> definitely, I don't know. The Adam S one is definitely the one I would want to purchase first. Yeah. That's, you know the one I'm talking about, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I know. It's black and has like the red accents. Yeah. And it's a fucking drop. <clears throat> it's actually a fucking slick car. I would drive that around the city like a fucking. <laughs> like Batman? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, like fucking Batman. Like, no, I'd probably I'd just wear my fucking regular clothes, but I would just be <laughs> around in that shit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Breaks through the wall. <laughs> He's here. Yeah. But yeah, man, that's that's dope that we talked about that. That's a good that's a good thing to visualize. Yeah. <laughs> that fucking car on 22X. <laughs> I guess show shows here. <laughs> uh, uh, so on to our local. Um and still just keeping it uh within the, the rap section. So what albums you have to have heard as a rapper, you know, to actually be be serious, you know, like, you know, there, there's some, so, you know, we've decided like it, within rap, I think within anything, right? Like, even if you were fucking, if you were writing romantic novels, right? And you were within that, <clears throat> that um genre. genre of people, you know, there would be a like, oh, you're a romantic novel writer. 
oh, you must have heard or you must have read this, this, and this, right? Like oh, these are the basis, you know? So I think it's just the same in any kind of like uh, field. So mm-hmm. what are the rap, the necessary rap albums one must have heard to be, con- you know, to be taking this shit seriously, you know? So what would you say they are? Um, Man, first of all, before I even give you them, if you're a rapper and you, and you haven't done your due diligence, I just, it does hurt me slightly, but just now you're here, you're listening and you can do it. So um, number one, you have to hear for me, the number one Illmatic that mm. has, you have to hear that album as a rapper. You need to hear it top to bottom. You should, you need to hear it all the time. Like you need to know the album. That's the one you can study that is timeless, that you can study the flows and you can study the wordplay and it'll, it will help you as a, as an artist because it's so good. Um, another one, let's go back and forth. So I got Elmatic. What, what's one you got? You can do five. Yeah. You know, I've got reasonable doubt. Um, mm-hmm. cause, um, yeah, man, like just such a cohesive listen, you know, um, Jay is one of the goats and that's like his intro to the game. And um, I don't know, I kind of feel like I, I watched the documentary um, when they did the anniversary of it a while ago um, where I was like, basically the album, he was coming out of the streets, right? And like he was coming out of, you know, just being a full-time fucking drug dealer. And it was just kind of like trying to transition into being a rapper. So it was kind of like him and his boys we're just trying to like hit this lick, like we're trying to do music. And he, basically my understanding was they, they were never trying to do, have a career from this. Like they were, they knew Jay could rap. They knew they could, you know, they knew they could try to like sell this album because they couldn't get a deal. Like they were going to just do it independent, just try to get the bag from this one album. And, you know, that would be a legal bag and then on to the next legal hustle. Right. Um, um, so that's, that's what they were on. And I just feel like just part of that story. Like when I hear the album, I hear like, I hear the necessity, you know, like I hear the, you know what I mean? I, I hear the drive. I hear the need to like compete in that time. You know, that album came out as well. Like, um, <clears throat> Illmatic would have come out in, um, 94. 94. Ready to Die also came out in 94, you know, um, Raekwon's only bill for Cuban links came out in, I think, 94, 95. All of these are like New York classics. So Jay coming out and these are his peers knew he had to like, yo, this, this is an era where, if you're not coming out with some lyrical shit, then don't drop your debut, you know? And so um, I just felt like, and that's, that's why I'm just bringing all the background. Because I think that's that's truly what I appreciate the most about the album is at this point in my, as a musician trying to like come up is, it's not just the music, it's great music, it's cohesive, it's telling his story, but it's it's the story behind the music, you know? It's that, yo, you know, they had to put this together and, you know, they were able to, from that album that they thought they weren't really going to do much with, even though they didn't have the backing of the industry behind them, you know, they were able to turn it into a dynasty, you know, Rockefeller reigned for a period, you know, there was Cameron, there was fucking Kanye West, um, and then fucking Jay-Z is still a billionaire, you know, so, um, he's got Cole, he's got fucking Rihanna. Yeah. And so that spawned into everything else. I I believe like without Jay-Z, like a whole, like hip hop, as we know it today, wouldn't look the same, you know? Um, without the without Jay Z, you know, taking that stand because really, it, um, I think a reasonable doubt is the birth of, you know, Jay Z going to record labels and showing them a couple tracks and they're they're being like, yo, man, this flow you got where you're doing all this shit, we're not feeling this shit, you know, um, and just him being like, if he if he was on some like, all right, man, if professionals are telling us like this shit is whack, then maybe it's whack. Let's just keep trapping, but he was on some nah. We know we got something. Let's push. Let's make this thing. And I feel like a reasonable doubt from that gave birth to the likes of every, like a lot of stuff that's going on, you know, like that, that was, that was the beginning of Jay-Z's career, you know, like that, that gave birth to a lot of stuff that's going on in hip hop. So I feel like I could talk about this project forever, but for me, um, definitely this project, because as a rapper, it's, <clears throat> it's a tried and true story, man. Like the story of the the album is basically, you know, the label said we couldn't, you know, you, you don't have the talent. You can't do it, you know? And, you know, they still went and put out the album independently. And it's, you know, it's appreciated in the culture till this day. It's from 1996. 
And you see, you see that same story with Kanye, you know, Kanye went everywhere trying to shop, try records like Jesus Walks, all this stuff. No one wanted to give him a chance except Rockefeller, you know? And so you kind of see that kind of like mirror story effect. Story continue. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a story of perseverance, which I feel it's not just about the music, but it's also about as a rapper, you need that element. You need to know Very about that element. Like it, it doesn't, it's not just going to get handed to you, you know? You need to know that story so that you know that it's going to be a grind. Mm. Um, but yeah. Word, man. I love that album. I think I listen to that shit almost, almost every day. I at least have a, a few songs that come on my shuffle and I hear that album. I adore, I adore that album. Um, another one I was going to say, which you already brought up, 94, Ready to Die. Mm. Um, to me, um, I think it's a perfect album. Um, it's so timeless and it's really like, to like, I see that as the quintessential hip hop album where <clears throat> if you want to copy a formula, if you want to see what makes a good album, you do that, you follow that formula of that album. Because even the intro, where he's like getting born and like, like all that, all that goodness, it's a uh, it puts you in the music, and it was definitely it definitely had some doggy style. Like you could hear doggy style throughout that whole project. But uh, my favorite part of that intro uh, is at the end when he's like walking out um, of a prison and they. <laughs> and the guy's like, yo, um, are you gonna are you excited to are you excited to be out? Like, yo, what kind of fucking dumbass question is that? <laughs> like, you know, like, yo, fucking am I excited to fucking be out of prison? Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you, you say, yo, what Shut kind up. of dumbass? <laughs> I, just, I know it just it just kind of like puts you there. You're just kind of like, yo, you know, you are there, you're right. Cause that whole sequence, like it goes through his life, it's like yo, being born, like all the yeah. bullshit, leaving prison, then you get into like, yo, things didn't change. It's a whole it just, it's a good, like, it tells you yeah. a story, right? But it's, it's really like a concept album, man. It's like... It is a concept album. Man. It is. I believe that Jay-Z did not, because, I mean, it's a known fact. As much as I love Jay-Z, like, you, you, there's videos of Jay-Z rapping in, um, you know, before 1996, where he wasn't doing the whole, like, gangster thing. I don't know if you've seen any of those, like, where he was rapping with uh, ja- Jazz O, his mentor. I believe so. I think I was a where he used to have like this chop. He used to rap a lot faster. He'd wear like colorful, you know, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, he looked like he was 12. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so he was he was trying to make it in rap because like, that dude had a record deal, Jazz O. So he was trying to make it in the rap game, you know, prior to 96. But it was, you know, he could rap. He had the skill of rapping, but he wasn't trying to, he wasn't know, trying persona. to do that whole mafioso S. I believe that in 94, when uh, Nas dropped Illmatic, and especially ready to die ready to die was kind of like the blueprint for jay-z to be like all right i can rap and now i just need to like you know element this mafioso thing um and i'll take it to the next level so i believe that um ready to die was really like the blueprint for jay-z's uh reasonable it was the jay-z's whole like persona i'm not saying jay-z has a persona like because he is that person we know that yeah, um, but yeah but prior to prior to um Biggie's album, you know, there wasn't really anyone trying to give us that. Because I feel like when I think of like Biggie, I think of, I think of, um, I just think of a, an, a well-rounded character. That's what I think about when I think about Biggie. Um, I think I, I even heard Jay say that as well. Like Biggie could be serious. He could say some really like threatening, cold shit. to be like, yo, this guy's cold. He could say some really like, you know, funny funny shit, you know, he could be really humorous, you know, like he could just play, he could be all these different characters in one song, you know, whereas I felt like Jay brought just that one, like the element of like, you know, but I, I felt like he brought one aspect of what, of the many sides of Biggie is kind of how I see it. Um, not to discredit uh, Jay or anything, but definitely De- Jay's whole essence is an offspring of ready to die and illmatic for sure i believe that yeah so yeah i saw i remember that year um i'm saying it like i was fucking there that year but uh, <laughs> i watched like interviews um where uh, it's like biggie finds out he won lyricist of the year at um the bt awards 
And he's like, what? Crazy. Because he was like, Nas is in that category for Illmatic. He was like, yo, I thought Nas went fucking crazy. Um, but <laughs> yeah. And I have a book here. I don't even know who I would give it to. I have a book here that's like, because everyone considers like 94 is like, everyone considers like, yo, Illmatic to be like, you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest rap album of all time, you know, like it's, it, it fits in that title. But I do have a book here. I think it's like the yearbook of rap. And for like 1994, it like says, I'm sure it's written by someone that was alive during or, you know, experiencing it during that time. It's like, yo, so if you ask anyone, everyone will talk about Nas's album dropped in 94. And that's like one of the most influential albums, blah, blah, blah. But make no mistake, the greatest and most impactful rap album that dropped in 1994, you know, so if you were someone in hip hop culture at the time, you would have felt it, was Biggie's Ready to Die. Um, And that's... And I can see that because it's kind of like as classic as um, Illmatic is, Ready to Die had Juicy, you know, it had singles like Juicy, it had Big Papa, you know, it, it, had, fucking, it had fucking Diddy, you know, taking it to the next level. <clears throat> That's kind of how I see it. Um, but yeah, not to discredit them, but, but those are just two fucking great albums to drop in the same year, you know. Um, and yeah. So, who's next? Uh, I just said Ready to Die. What's another one you think? We'll do two um, more. That you have to have heard. Yeah. I'm going to bring it pretty recent, uh, but I'll say Kanye West is college dropout because I'm just talking about Kanye West. No, I agree. One of the offsprings of. <laughs> but yeah, Kanye West is. Man, there's probably a lot of Kanye West albums you should hear. <laughs> but, um, I, I would start with the first one, Kanye West College Dropout, for sure. Because, it, and again, again, it's the story of it, you know, like it's the, you know, he had records like Jesus Walks, All Falls Down. Mm. He had these records re- recorded as probably the same verses, but just demo mixes or whatever. Um, and he shopped them to record labels. Um, and they were all like, nah, we don't, you know, like, because at the time, you know, the rap was fucking, if you don't sell drugs, you know, we're not trying to hear that shit. Um, and, uh, you know, Kanye came through with the fucking, you know, pink polos and the backpacks, you know? Um, and I just remember like one of my favorite records on, um, college dropout is last call. Um, and again, cause he tells the story, right. And that, that record is like 12 minutes long. Um, but it's like, it doesn't feel that way because it's so like engaging. He like raps. And then at the end, he's like, just talking about like, yo, so. I'm going to this place. Like I'm, you know, he tells like, like, yo, I'm, I'm living at my mom's. I'm like talking to, I'm trying to sell beats to this dude, blah, blah, blah. I get, and then I, I have to, I move to, to uh, an apartment in Chicago. He gets evicted. He has to move to New York. He just basically like tells you the whole grind. Like, um, and it was when he moved to New York, like one of the first beats he made was um, Heart of the City, he said. Um, and he just knew he was on a wave with that. And obviously eventually he met Jay, and you know, um, got fucking six beats on the blueprint, and yeah, the story went on from there. But it's like you, you, you get this that story. I believe, you know what I mean. Like that's it's not just for me. It's not just about the music. The story around the music creates the it, you know it's part of the experience of listening to the music for me as well. You know, I can hear the I can hear the grind. You know, I love uh, spaceships because you know spaceships embodies that um, embodies this whole this whole grind that I'm talking about. You know. Um, talks about working at Gap, holding <clears throat> the khakis, talks about like, yo, whenever this fucking khaki is missing, they're going to blame the black dude. They're going to be like, yo, you know. Um, but people also said in that bar, he's like, yo, let some white people walk in. I, I bet they show off their token blackie. Like, you know, so just, just you know, like just, and this is at the, at the time when no one is, you know, even Jay is just on his fucking just giving us some fucking drug bars, yeah. you know? So we're getting, this is, it's new, you know, and this gives birth to the fucking Kid Cudi's, Big Sean's, the Drake's. This is a backpack rap. That was the start. That was a, such an influential album, man. Shit. I still like, the beats on there are still crazy to me. Like I still try to ma- mimic those, uh, that production. The, uh, the way it's, the way it's made. It's such a classic. Um, I think that's, I think, I think that album in recent times is like, that's what made me like fall even deeper in love with hip hop in, yeah. in recent, like whenever I, whenever I truly consume that album, because I told you actually, um, 
I used to just listen to albums on shuffle because I just always download my stuff from fucking LimeWire, you know, and sometimes the folder is not in order, you know, whatever. And I just, I just won't give a fuck, you know, so I'd just be like, all right. And even some, I would look at the Wikipedia page, like to confirm that this is, have the right amount of songs or whatever. Yeah, this like, but I'd be like, but I would look I'm like, all right, this is obviously not the right track list, but I'm like, whatever. Um, and it wasn't until I met my homie Stefan, um, Stefan Legacy that he was like, yo, you gotta be listening to this shit in order because there's fucking skits that, you know, transition into songs and stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know, you know, some of those skits would make sense <laughs> if I was listening to it. <laughs> if I listened to fucking School Spirit skit before School Spirit, it probably would make sense. <laughs> like, what is this album? <laughs> um, so yeah, and just, I think around that time that I just, I discovered that, that also was my discovery for the appreciation of albums, right? And so, it's just beautiful, you know, like one of the first albums I made a, you know, I mean, I, I did come from listening to CDs, so I was listening to albums in order initially, yeah. but one of the first albums when I got back to listening to albums in order, one of the first ones I heard was that album, and that's like a fucking masterpiece. Yeah. Um, so definitely um, a must here if you are trying to rap, if you're trying to produce as well, right? Like that's just uh, sonically some amazing hip hop shit to listen to. Last one I'll say, um, Slim Shady. Have LP. you done five? This is five. How many have you? What did you? What are the ones you've said? So we said, are we all? Are we doing five both? Oh, I thought that. Oh, right. That's what I'm saying. Five. I thought you were. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we should do five because then you're gonna have like three more than me, or like no, one more than me. Yeah. Okay. You'd want to do another one then. Uh, mm. yeah. yeah. Let's just do. I'll just do one more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Um, so this is. Keep in mind, this is the bare minimum of what rappers should hear because there's so many albums that I could suggest. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. That's why I was like, I thought we were going to do five each because I um, could could right off the top right now name a couple more. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> just by Kanye. But <laughs> word. Uh, Slim Shady LP. Uh, the reason I think rappers should hear this is because to me, it's a very good. If you're if you're trying to find who you are as an artist. Some Shady LP is a very good template of being your total and honest, unapologetic self. Um, it's It was brand new. No one was rhyming like M at the time. That's why it had such an impact is because the way he was rapping, nobody was doing that. Um, and it helped that he was rapping at... I was re-listening to it the other day and there's a lot of storytelling. And I think mm-hmm. that's the thing that the, all these albums have in common. Um, <clears throat> it's a ton of storytelling. And it's kind of the, I think so. I think, and one thing with all these albums, these are all debut yeah. albums, right? That we're yeah, saying. that was a we're coincidence, even, but... I don't think actually, it's a coincidence no, at all. Yeah, I don't think no. so. I think it's a, it's a known fact that in the game of hip-hop, you got to come out the gate with that fire. You got to have that first album that's going to shake up the world, but... Um, if you're looking to study a rapper, obviously M is like, it's M. So I was even thinking some Wayne shit too. But um, so that's that's my that's my number three pick for sure. It's like, it's something you can, the beats are weird as hell. I got to say, the beats are super weird, but they, they make sense for what but he's doing. They're all for. Dr. Dre, bro. Yeah. Well, not, yeah. But the yeah. he has his touch on him, yeah. He's yeah. pretty lucky. I mean, guy. like if Dr. Dre is approving of all the beats, you you know, you don't you don't have to worry. Yeah. Doc uh, Dr. Dre gives you one of these in the studio. <laughs> that's all you need to know. That was the smallest <laughs> just barely see it. Oh, we good. That's all you need. Like every everyone in the industry knows, like if you get one of those from Dre, like you might have a hit. <laughs> some of my favorite songs are on there from him though like uh, Role Model yeah um, Role Model is crazy what's the one man fuck hold on there's so many good songs um, Guilty Conscious is one of the first songs I ever heard by him If I Had My Fault Rock Bottom rock oh bottom. yeah Guilty Conscious is fucking nuts dude Bad Meets Evil's on here Bro. Oh yeah. Oh man, I'm just like remembering this whole album. Yeah, man. This is fire. I'm just what like, a classic. It's been a while since I've gone back. <laughs> 97 Bonnie and Clyde. Right. They did like the 25 years of this recently, right? Or 20 yeah. years. Something like that. I want to play a song, but last time we got flagged right, right. by YouTube. No. Fuck what was YouTube. the uh there's a bar I'm thinking about? Um 
off um is a guilty conscience where he talks about the bully that wants to beat him oh that's uh um, that's on um i know what you're talking about oh, fuck what song is that that's as the like don't turns. you want to give me after school detention nah this bully wants to beat your ass and i'm a letter <laughs> <laughs> ever since the day i was born drugs what they used to say i was on nah yeah that's that's one of the songs that's like crazy storytelling because he's yeah. talking about he's talking about that situation and you can literally like you're listening and you can visualize what he's yeah yeah about. exactly that's and exactly why it's just so it's so good man the whole album's really it's really funny too uh, it's yeah, just very bars, man while we're talking about this what's a what's another album for you my friend it's definitely going to be a dr dre album Veronica um, one or two they're both great albums, but I think for the sake of this conversation, um, I would mm. say 2001. Oh, um, really? 2000 and uh, the first one is my favorite Dr. Dre album. I think I've said that. Um, but I think for the conversation is like, what should every rapper have heard? If I, was, if, I, if I had to pick one album for any rapper to hear, like I've, I've even said this before, like literally if you're an alien that came from, you know, outer space, you know, and you, you know, you were like, what is this hip hop thing? What is the humans are talking about? You know, let me, this is Dr. J's 2001 chronic is like what I have to give you. So, you know, if you listen to that, top the to bottom, then you'll understand like, yeah, yeah, like you, want, you know, even if, even if you don't understand English, if you're, yeah, just those beats when you're like, when you're done listening, you're like you understand now. Okay. Yeah. Then I can feed you Illmatic and all that. And then, then we can talk about lyricism. But yeah. <laughs> Based off like the sonics of hip hop, like that's what I'd have to give you. That is like hilarious. A couple tracks in, you would understand, like, okay, this is this hip hop, like, these hot yeah. ass beats, like this. <laughs> Why is this so clean? That is a lot of these other projects that kind of like me. diversify with the yeah. beats. And they kind of like, it's more, it's more built around what the lyricist is doing. I'm whereas sorry. a Dr. Dre album is about the producer and then lyricists get involved. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think, and that's, I always feel that way. Like, that's if I had to, if I had to just pick one album to describe the sound of hip hop, like, to someone who's never heard it before, mm. I would I would pick that album. And so, again, uh, Dr. Dre is a fucking you know master and, uh, producer, you know. Um, and at this at this point in his career, he's surrounded by like some of the best lyricists in LA and the world. You know, he's fucking got Eminem writing his verses and doing guest verses. He's got Snoop again returning uh, to do his back and forth roles with him. Um, Still Dre was written by Jay-Z, you know, um, literally, I just, I feel like this is Dre and that even the energy on records, like Still Dre and forgot about Dre, Dre was on some like, you know, like, oh, these guys, these guys must've forgot who the fuck I am. Like, yo, they don't, they don't know who the fuck, I'm gonna make all these hard beats. I'm gonna get all the best lyricists to come write my bars. (laughs) They'll not know what hit them. Like, um, because Right, the firm, like that whole album, like Dr. J was supposed to be behind that and that kind of flopped. Um, so that kind of like tinted his name. Um, the firm flop even talks about it on Still Dre. We forgot about Dre. Firm flop. Um, but yeah, I, I just feel like, again, that's the, again, it's, it's about the energy, right? That just comes with the album. That whole album is like Dre's trying to prove something and like it's flawless, bro. Like it's like fucking, yes. you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, that it's is, one of those things like whenever album. I'm whenever I'm in the mood to like get into that, like this, I'm always gonna it's one of those like sometimes you know when you want to go to an album, like oh what the tracks I fuck with here. It's like nope, that's I had like I listen to this whole thing. You know like, like there's no there's not, <laughs> I don't even it's not know. just a couple jerks. I've never heard another hitman song, but I'm a I'm gonna fuck with this verse and know every word. <laughs> all these bitches and all these hoes near yeah, somebody gonna get fucked. <laughs> Yeah, dude. That's like a short song. That's like an under two minute song. But it's like, and there's so many records like that where it's just like it just come, it just comes up, and it's like sometimes it's not even on the record. You know, Dre's not on Explosive. I know, but that's the best song on the album. That's one of the fucking <laughs> best best records. You know, it. But it's like, yeah, fucking crazy, man. It's a, it's about the music. That's that's what it is. You know, like, I've, and that's and that's why I can't put another like a lyricist album over that if I'm if I'm just talking about the sound of hip hop because. Dre is prioritizing the music. He's like, yo, if, I'm sure he probably had a verse on like, um, exclusive and was like, nah, this this sounds fire the length it's at right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need to put another verse on this. Yeah. Everyone came through and killed it. That's one of my favorite records in hip hop, period. Like, and 
I remember just listening to that all the time when I was younger and like I never knew what they were talking about. Like now I'm like older listening to like what the fuck you're talking about. I mean they were talking about like You're definitely gonna blast that in the Batmobile. Fucking bitches, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I remember um the sk- what skit is it? It's on um uh, No, it's uh Marshall Mathers LP. I think it's Paul like calling um yeah, Eminem, Paul. he's like, yo, like, oh, yeah, hey, Em, it's Paul. Like, um, so, like, man, I don't know how they're going to, you know, feel about this album about Vicodin and fucking, you know, fucking gays and all this shit, you know, like, <laughs> you know why Dre's album was successful? Because he's rapping right. about bitches, blunts, and car, you know? <laughs> I'm like, yo, that's, that's just, this, that's the basic summary of the fucking Chronic album. <laughs> He's rapping about bitches, blunts, and cars. You're rapping about Viking and homosexuals. <laughs> Those kids are so good, man. Those kids are fucking nuts. But yeah, that would be my um, that would be my my pick for. So I picked three. As did I. That would be my third pick for sure. I would even put that number one if I had to put them in order. I, really, I would I say really honestly, know. if there was one hip hop album to show a new listener. That'd probably be the album because that would just that would just put you on a spiral effect of fucking um, like wanting to hear more. Yeah, you're right. I think yeah. I think it's just it's it just, just that I feel me. like I think of like Elmatic and it's like if you Elmatic might just go over your head. It might just be like too much. You know, it's like you're trying to it's like trying to like try like a drug for the first time and like just fucking taking the maximum amount. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, like, what is, what is, what's he doing? What are all these? And I'm like, yeah, I don't. <laughs> Should have started slower. <laughs> you weren't ready. <laughs> For real. But yeah. <clears throat> so on to some artists' motivation. Um, oh wait, hold one. on. That's uh, for this. Uh, what was the list? It was uh, Illmatic. Um, I said reasonable doubt. Elmatic, Reasonable Doubt, Ready to Die. And then you said... College Dropout. College Dropout, uh, Slim Shady LP, and The Chronic 2001. Yep. So rappers out there, if you haven't heard those albums, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, listen to them now, (laughs) and you're welcome. Yeah, like... um... (laughs) I don't know, just so much to gain. Like, I don't know. Like, it, 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 I, at the same time, like, even if you're on some, like, yo, fuck, no one's better than me. But it's, it's just some good hip-hop, you know, like, at the end of the day. Like, it's, yeah. this is really, like, some of the best in the music, you know, in the genre that, you know, you're trying to compete in. So, yeah, suck up some game. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, on to our artist motivation. And I'm just going to continue from where we left off there. Um, yeah, like, all these, all these rappers that we mentioned, a lot of these albums are debut albums, you know, um, except the Dre album. Um, but it just, it just kind of shows, um, the hunger, you know, the drive that has to come with, um, being a a great artist in hip hop, you know, um, it's, it's part of, you know, always wanting it, you know, like for someone like Nas who, you know, is widely believed, even though Nas is still great, still dropping great music today, but it's widely believed that, you know, Illmatic is like one of his best, if not his best albums, right. Um, coming out, right. It just shows like, you just, you know, you have to be, you have to have that hunger from the start, you know, like that's, that's what I take from all of these, all these examples. Like we're trying, we're talking about albums that you should listen to if you're trying to take rap seriously, if you're trying to like, you know, take your craft to the next level. And um, a lot of these guys' these albums, you know, um, it's, if you look into the stories behind the albums, and that's another thing, uh, look, don't just look at the, the albums or don't just listen to the music, look into the stories behind the album. A lot of these guys, if you look into their stories, you see uh, you see hardship, you see um, you see you see a grind. Um, for a lot of these guys, it didn't just come easy, you know. Um, no one no one had it handed to them, and I feel like that's what created the great music um, out of it. So um, I feel like that's always a summary of this, these artist motivations: embrace the grind. You know, that's yeah, that's uh, that's the takeaway there. Word, man. Yeah. Um, conclusion, y'all, this has been a really good episode. Um, thank you to whoever's listening. I, we appreciate it so much. Uh, we love talking hip hop and definitely, uh, anyone that's interested on being on the podcast, reach out to, uh, why we see hip hop daily 
um, which is run by none other than Polo Show, my dude. And we'll see if we can make that work. Um, we're looking at a we're looking for a studio right now, so definitely um, keep watch for that because eventually we're gonna have some fire production value. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. I think we both have something in our minds. I think we have the same vision, uh, yeah. essentially. Um, yeah. But yeah, so this has been, what episode is it, 17? Yep. Damn. So we're on episode 17 already. Um, lifetime flies, man. Uh, so yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, my name is Soy. You can follow me at the only true Soy. Um, show show. I'm Polo Show. Uh, you can follow me at Poliano underscore DA underscore Don. So Poliano to Don. Yeah. And follow us on Lifted Ones. That's Lifted underscore Ones. Uh, we're going to patent that name pretty soon. Shout out to that guy. <laughs> uh, that's an inside joke. But uh, yeah. So thank you guys for listening. We'll be back next week with some more fire. Uh, make sure you check out our music as well. I have an album called On the Search for More Out. It's on all streaming platforms. It's doing really well. I'm very, very grateful. Um, And show, show, you have any music you want to promote? Yeah, I just dropped a music video uh, for my song called Rise. It's on the Lifted One Records YouTube channel. So check that out. Uh, The song is also available on all streaming platforms. Absolutely. Fire video, fire song. Uh, We are Lifted Ones. And thank you guys for listening. I'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.